your word. Father, that we shall go out here today to dominate the marketplace in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that we shall have receptive hearts, fertile hearts, Lord. Father, we shall disabuse our minds of any, any age-old culture that shall prevent us for receiving your word today. Father, we just say thank you. Lord, we glorify your holy name. Father, we pray that at the end, Lord, that your name alone be glorified, that your name alone be magnified. Father, we just want to say thank you. Lord, we just want to say thank you. We glorify your name, O oh Lord. We magnify your name. Father, we just say thank you. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you, King of glory. Because we stand on your promise that you have given us all things pertaining to life and godliness. Lord, we say thank you. Father, we will know that you wish above all things that we prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. We just say thank you. Father, we glorify your holy name. Father, we honor and magnify your name. We say blessed be your name, O Lord, as we have prayed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. in the house tonight we've gathered before the king of kings to love him and so we are going to raise our heart to raise our hands and exalt the name of jesus for he's worthy of our praise Yeah. <laughs> 
He rescued my soul. His blood has covered my sin. I believe. I believe. Hallelujah. Yeah. My shame is taken away. And my pain is healed in his name. I believe.
can you just give him thanks this evening? Can you bless his name? Father, we adore you. Lord, we magnify you. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, our King. Thank you, our Savior. Spirit of the living God, we thank you for your presence. Lord, we bless you. We adore you. There's none like you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for you are starting this meeting with us. Thank you for your presence throughout the entire sections. Thank you for your name will be glorified. Lives will be transformed. Destinies will be imparted to the glory and to the praise of your name. For in Jesus' mighty name we have worship. Put your hands together for the King of Kings. Greet, greet one or two persons before you take your seat this evening. Greet one or two persons. Welcome them to the maiden edition of Switch Conference of Grace Breed Believers Assembly. You may have your seat this evening. Hallelujah. Okay, good evening and welcome to the maiden edition of Switch Conference of Grace Breed Believers Assembly. Thank you, City Takers. God bless you for your consistency in season and out of season. Our ushers to challenge you guys in recent times. Can we put our hands together for our ushers? Ha ha hallelujah. This is Switch Conference. It's not a religious meeting. It's a mind renovation meeting. Hallelujah. One of the calling of Grace Breed Believers Assembly is mentality renovation. And that's what switch to switch our brain. That's what Switch Conference is about. And briefly, my job is to introduce uh, our first speaker for this evening. But just to tell you a little bit of why we are having Switch Conference. The vision of Grace Breed Believers Assembly is to raise balanced believers. And one of the scriptures that that is anchored on is taught John 2. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. And we have always said here that our, if we said we are balanced, it means spiritual, spiritually, mentally, physically, financially, maritally, on all fronts. Where you stand, there won't be where for people to pick anything. Bible speaking about Christ, he said they, they came, but they found nothing in him. It means he was a balanced person. When they came to tempt him about whether to pay tax or not, he said, give me one of the coin. And he asked them, whose inscription is this on it? They said, it's that of Caesar. I said, then you should give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. That is talking about mind, mental development. He was sound in the mind, not just spiritual. So he could, he has answer to every question of his day. Praise God. And that's what... God is doing in Grace Breed Believers Assembly. And from this meeting, some of those things will be provoked in the name of Jesus. And then the second scripture talking about balance is in Genesis 24 verse 1. If, if, if you permit me to read from one of the current uh, translation, uh, contemporary English version. He said, now, he said, Abraham was now a very old man. The Lord has made him rich. And he was successful in everything he did. If it's in marriage, he was successful. If it was in business, he was successful. In everything he did. Is that perfection and shaping on all sides that we are talking about. Praise God. And, and I listened to someone some times ago who said, whatever you are doing in the 21st century, he said, even if you are selling granite, you should take advantage of the information technology that whatever you are doing in this era without the help of IT that is like a guy winking at a lady in the dark that only him will know what he's doing but nobody else will know and that's why we are privileged this evening kick starting the conference is an IT professional <laughs> hallelujah and somehow my, my respect for him just went up as I was just speaking with someone outside because we're held down in a small hold up here. They say he's already in the house. I respect people who have value for time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and, and the name of his 
the meaning of his name, which also rhymes with the fact that he's the one going to be the first speaker, the first section in the history of Switch Conference. So it will be, it will be in our archive for life. His name is Adakole. For those of us who understand in Doma, Adakole means the father of the house. <laughs> so the father will be laying the, the father of the house will be laying the foundation. So without too much, with a standing ovation, I believe, let's welcome engineer Adakole as he speaks to us this evening. Thank you so much. That was not necessary. <laughs> please, please, uh, be comfortable. Have your seats. Uh, thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be standing in front of you. Uh, when this came to my um, notice, I was really, really excited because the work of the master need haste. And indeed, the field is ripe, but the laborers are few. And one of the reasons why the laborers have been few in the Christendom is because all of us want to make sure that we eat two square meal. We want to make sure that we have things to do. We want to make sure that we have money with us. Trust me, even to put up this space and to preach the gospel require finances. So it was my diligent um, joy that something like this exists and something like this is here to breed the minds of believers into making use of the opportunities that will make them better. I'm very sure if you have 100 million in your account, your prayer points are different. <laughs> and I'm very sure if you have 100 million in your account and you're telling somebody Jesus loves you, the person would listen, <laughs> irrespective of whether he knows what you're saying or not. He would listen, right? So it, is, it was actually a thing of joy for me because indeed, indeed, IT can take you from point A to point B, short time, Let's say less stress. Let's see less stress. And you will get there. That said, I'm really, really happy about the switch, the word switch. If you, if you want to do anything now to this light, you have to what? So in that statement, what do you think switch would mean? In that statement where if you want to do anything, I'm not even saying it's going to be positive or negative, but if you want to do anything to this light right now, you have to switch. So if you want to leave from point A to point B, you have to what? And then we are in where? Switch conference. So please give a round of applause for the news. <laughs> All right. Uh, that, that will be my intro. Uh, sorry. I, I don't have that biography of no 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 my biggest biography is my name is James a well understand servant of the Lord who knows that the work of the master requires haste all right uh, to my slide please so my topic is simple opportunities in the info technology space and the topic of the conference is also very beautiful is anchored on okay okay thank you thank you yes beautiful so my topic is simple opportunity in tech space and um, the conference topic is also very beautiful um, it based on something I hold dearly at heart uh, which is making use of what you have now, where you are, right? Um, so that's, if I want to expand on that, is a very, is a, a topic that we might not live on time, but let's leave it. But it's something you should on your own, just as you know what your value is, it's something you should do as your own personal assignment.
to understand that, provided of where you are, because you have Jesus, you have all you need to excel. Provided you have Jesus. All right? I want to believe I'm speaking to believers. So my statements are going to be, provided you have what? I'm not saying provided you believe. Because the difference between a believe and a haver is a belief thinks it, a haver knows it. So provided you have what? So it's more than the belief because the primary assignment of everybody is believe and you saved. It's a free line. But walk your salvation is where you get to know. Right? So provided you have... So provided you have Jesus, the topic of the conference is simultaneous for you. That means if they were to throw you into the lion's den like Daniel, there is a 90-something percent that you would also work out. Because what Daniel had was what? It was Jesus. Because Jesus told us that it is only through him we can go to who? The Father. So for Daniel to have a relationship with God, it was through Jesus. Quote me anywhere. All right, so let's go opportunities in the tech space. Uh, next. Uh, next again. Next again. Technology. All those places are not needed. We're gospel people. Um, so technology. What, what, what do we even think is technology at the first place? How do you want to look at it? Do you think it's the smartphone in your hand? Or do you think it's a good laptop you have? Or do you think it's what? Uh, I like to make it interactive, so if you want to answer just wave, I would let you answer. What do you think is technology, please? Anybody? Okay. For me, technology is the ability for me to do something without stress. For me, technology is the ability for me to do something without stress. So if I were able to come here without checking and sweating my life out, I have used technology. That technology at that instance would be whatever vehicle you have used. If I want to talk to my mom somewhere away from me and I pick up a device and I was able to reach to her and speak to her without much stress, that is technology. That technology could be a phone call or a data call from WhatsApp, Facebook, and the likes, right? So first of all, look at it that technology is anything you do that makes things easy for you, right? So let's look at it, information technology. The study of, wow, 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 wow. Should I use my system? It's not really bright for someone to read. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, so sorry. Uh, could you just share the link? I made it open so that a lot of people could have access to it. If you could drop the link, it would be good so that people could just have um, access to it. I dropped it publicly. So um, while that is going on, uh, the study or use of system, especially computers and telecommunication for storing, retrieving, and sending information. That's what's supposed to read there. The study of or use of system, especially computers and telecommunication devices for storing, retrieving, and sending information is what is information technology. So um, technology was the instance type of things we have in technology is what we know as the information technology, uh, information communication technology, which is the ICT, 
Are we together? Uh, go back again. I'm just, yeah, no. Back, back, yes. So we've defined technology as things we do or things we use to make things easy for us. But now, just as a car is different from a phone, right? There are categories to it. That's why we have telecommunication. You must have heard it. We have NCC for that, right? Uh huh. We have telecommunication. We have, you've heard ICT, ICT, ICT unit, media, right? That exists. Then you have, you've heard of people that studied computer science, computer science, you know? I hear those words are the ones doing heavy lifting these days. And then we have computer engineers. Computer engineers are people who work on, who help me build this. So they put the machines together, they fix the screen, keyboard, and all. So that's what all this is, just to achieve what? Technology, which makes things easy. But it was now streamlined to be that, when I need to now handle information, when I need to handle how data is processed, it now comes down to information technology, which is our next slide. Next slide, please. What is information technology? Because what we're talking about is opportunities in information, in tech. Like, if you remember, um, in infotech, right? So, what is now information technology? The study or use of systems, especially. Now, I've now brought it away from how bike or car is also a form of technology, right? I've tried to bring it back into where our topic is, which is infotech. Infotech now is information technology. So the study or use of systems, especially computers and telecommunicative devices, which includes your iPad, your phones, right? So that's what those things do generally is storing, retrieving, and sending. They, don't, they would not generate the information themselves. That's why if you see a message on your WhatsApp, it didn't just come from the blue. Somebody sent it, right? Although we have AIs now that do a lot. However, the stage of our AI still has human interaction. A human must instigate it. For now, a human must instigate it. So let's continue. So activities of an IT worker. Now, an IT worker are all those that generate it. So basically, I can call everybody an IT worker. Why? You all use WhatsApp, don't you? That's the, even me, I use WhatsApp. I'm not a social media person that much, but I use WhatsApp. So primarily, you know how to handle information technology. It's just that on the basic level, you can just do what is allowed. You don't have the ability to do what is not allowed. What is allowed in WhatsApp is you can make a call. But do you know there are engineers behind that only just made that button available, right? If that button were not available, you would not make a call, would you? Uh -huh. But there are now engineers like me that make the button available. Now, in fact, WhatsApp just released a new feature. I don't think a lot of people are using it yet. The way you send voice notes, you can send video, video notes. So we're not just going to soon have v, VN, they call it, right? So it's now going to be video notes, right? Uh -huh. So you see how it has been. Before, nobody could do that. It didn't mean it does not work, or it didn't mean it does not exist. Somebody just activated it. Uh -huh. So. IT workers, I just tried to explain how that brought this. So, but in the IT space, there are different things. And I'm gonna to try to analyze it and bring it to our contemporary environment so that we can have a balanced understanding. The assembly is raising balanced believers, right? Good. So, we have analyzers, which is analyzing. There are people who after this service, they will go back home and try to cut and join the service, try to push my picture so that I look better. You get, those are people that have information, they have the data. 
The data is the whole service that have happened. Theirs is now to streamline it, cut the part that makes sense for daddy and make short, short clips. Those are analyzers. You understand? Now, but in the data world, it's different. An analyzer in the data world would be all your charts you've been chatting since 2000. Facebook has it. If you have time to scroll, you will see it, right? They can now pick those charts, put it up in things like Excel, put it up in things we call Tableau, and try to make meaning out of it. Such meaning would be like what this person likes, what this person does a lot, how much does this person uses his Facebook. Um, a good application that does that publicly is Spotify. How many of you know that thing Spotify sends to everybody at the end of the year? To, yeah, Spotify rap. That is an analyzer in Spotify who have just listened to your one year of music and tell you that this is the person you played most. It's the same thing as what will come out of this service and you exceed a 30 minute cost. Most of you are on Instagram, right? You follow people like Femi Lazarus, Kingsley. Now, you don't, don't you, have you not come to your mind that this is a two hour service, but this is just a 30 minute clip of what he said, one thing. Analyzers do that. You see that now. You see the relationship between how you can use it in the body of Christ and how you can use it in the infotech space. Now, let's go to the next people, which are designers. Uh, how many of you have gone, oh, come on. If Jumia was scattered, would you buy any goods from them? Okay, maybe I, I shop on Jumia. I, I have some bad habits. I hate to go and then I feel like you're cheating me. You know, Nigerian markets, they will sell something for this guy 1K. But because you, they, ah, this one go get money, 2K. You just, I, I hate that feeling. I hate that feeling. So I just go online. I know that everybody that click on this link, we buy as I'm buying. No cheating. <laughs> so I do online. I do stores a lot. Sahar do not change their price overnight. At least that day, all of us buy um, this price. Right? So now, designers have the ability to make things appealing to you. Imagine if you open your, when you open your WhatsApp, I'm trying to use an application all of us understand. And then somebody's name is flying in one far side of the screen. The picture is flying on another side. You would not like that, would you? Good. So designers are those that come together and like place this and that and that and look at it and is this fine? Is this not fine? Mostly women do that. They have eyes for beauty. Don't argue it. <laughs> Please, a round of applause for women. Yeah, so then the programming, which is now the core thing. The programming is where, but don't let the word programming look vague and big for you. We might experience somewhat, I have somewhat experience. If my, if my experience were to be put into a human being, that person would be in, somewhere inside secondary school, they think university, right? So in my experience, I will tell you for free, programming is the act of talking to a machine. Quote me anywhere. Programming, the word programming, or the activity programming, is the act of talking to a machine. Let nobody tell you any other thing. In fact, it is so true that we call the things we use languages. If you would meet an experienced person and he says he's a developer or is a programmer, ask him what language do you write? That would be a very valid question because it's just all about him communicating with the laptop. The managers, we all need managers. You know what managers do? They orchestrate. Maybe the word orchestrate is big. They put people together to achieve a purpose. So there's product managers. They put all the engineers, the designers, 
the analyst, analyst, uh, analyzers, and all. Put everybody together and manage. Troubleshooters and support. Uh, when, you call, when you call your bank, and that's support. The person that picks the call and says, what's your problem? How can we help you? That's support. When you call MCN, that your airtime is not hitting your phone, that's support. So with that, let's look at what Big Gates said. Information technology and business are becoming interwoven. I feel like the word interwoven is still missing. I don't think anybody can talk meaningfully about one without talking about the other. Yes, like a pastor just told us, this modern day, if you're doing something and you're not finding a way to embed it into technology, you would not do very well for yourself. That's why we have a lot of Instagram vendors, right? Is that a word, Instagram vendors? Yes. With the whole, <laughs> trust me, content is not easy. <laughs> I, when I was driving in, I saw somebody on the street with ring lights, and in my heart, I was like, is your ring light brighter than the sun? <laughs> but he wants to create content. So now let's look at what we have. That's careers in infotech. Next slide. Ha. More than next slide, though. Careers in infotech. Are we together? All right, careers in infotech. So I've just explained different things that we need developers for. The analyzing points, the programmers, the managers, the people that get to design. Now let me show you where these kind of guys would be used. We've moved past this, next. Yes, we're here. So careers in infotech, web development and design. You see, a designer will be called web designer, right? And developer. Then we have game development and game designers. We have system analysts. We have network administration. We have database analysis. Now, database is where all what you do is stored. The reason why when you close your WhatsApp and comes back, nothing is missing is because it's been stored somewhere. And the name of that somewhere is database, right? So anytime you, you look for a child, just smile in your heart and say, they don't put this thing for database, all right? If that was not done, you would not see it, okay? If it's not stored in the database, you will never see it because computer don't have a mind of its own. It doesn't. Let no, those AI guys, AI um, from Germany, from BARD, from ChatGPT, they don't have a mind of their own. They only communicate based on what you ask them or based on what you tell them. If you don't touch it, it doesn't know jack, right? So let's continue. But these are just careers here. And then, of course, shall we know of um, fraud? We know of internet fraud. The ability, hacking. They don't hack your Facebook before. Good. Next slide, please. So we have information security, network security. Now, information security and network security are those guys that help you not to get hacked. You understand? They are those guys that help you not to get hacked. They are those guys that if you get hacked, you call support. Somebody has stolen my account. That, that request or that call will be sent to them and then they'll begin to do their findings. Okay, that's why they'll not tell you to provide X, Y, Z, A, B, C. And when you provide it, they put it together. If it tallies, they release the account back to you. That happens between information security and network security. Mobile apps. Now, we have web apps, things that work on laptops, and we have things that work on phone. The obvious reason is the two screens are not the same. That's an obvious reason. The way it's going to show on this is different from the way it's going to show there, right? So then we have software developers. I think that word is common already. Software developers are people that write it. I am a software developer, right? Outside all of your problems you've, you've, you've discovered, I will be the one to write to the computer and then tell the computer. And then when you come to use it, you just let you use it. 
Are we together? That's why software developer. Then IT project managers, I did talk about the managers. They are the ones that put everybody together to achieve the common goal. Next, please. So um, this is just now an elaboration of all those guys I mentioned, right? Um, how you are a system analyst, a software designer, a computer programmer, a system administrator, support personnel. Now, the time frame you can take to master these things, the lowest ever is support personnel because it just means you pick up your call, you answer the person, and you send the report out. Then, system administrator. While it will take you 10 to 15 years, but with the advent of um, the AI tools and with how fast things are going, I'd kind of reduce it to zero to five years. If you start from today, zero to five years, you'll be a very good expert. However, there is a known fact that you have to spend about 20,000 hours before you can be called an expert in anything, in anything. If you say you want to pack sheets today, before they will call you an expert in that, as easy as you think it is, you have to have spent minimum of 20 working hours. That's why these years are looking very vague, right? But nothing beats it when you have Jesus. So let's move on. So uh, I looked for, next slide please. I looked for statistics of Nigeria, my country. Sorry, you know the. But I considered using US. Why? Um, US is quite populated than Nigeria, one. Secondly, US is well documented than Nigeria. And lastly, dollars is generally accepted in everywhere, right? So wouldn't it be reasonable to use that currency? So now if you look at the projection of US currently, this is what they are looking for. And look at, you may not see it very well, so just map the color. You see that there is nowhere that the color is small. You get? There is nowhere that the demand is, is small, the demand big, big. The black, even though black wants to finish it, it's still plenty. And a black person is just somebody that is doing, uh, it's just a whole of help decks, mobile, big data. Help desk is customer care. That's only black. And then look at how, how much people are looking for people for it. And then this is just US. What if you compare it with Europe? What if you compare it to Canada, Australia, Austria, China, uh, Japan, right? So there is indeed a high demand of people that understand things like this. I'm trying to rush. I just have 10 minutes. And then let me show you their salaries. None of them is taking home small pay. The lowest pay is about $93,000. As I yesterday when I did dollar transaction, I did dollar for 1,300. So if you multiply 1,300 by the lowest, 93, and you end that in one year in Nigeria. Oh, can I shock you? Tech is the, only is the only industry right now that people do two jobs comfortably. Tech is also one of the big industry that you can be in a country and do it for another country. I don't think lawyers can do that. <laughs> and I also don't think doctors can do that because if you are a doctor in Nigeria and you want to practice in our brother here, Togo or Ghana, you write the exam, wait six months to collect license, if you fail, you write again. But trust me, <laughs> we day here. They collect US deal. <laughs> so tech has that space. Now, while I have told you all this, and these are beautiful, 
I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Right? My slide's over. I'm not going to lie to you. These things are not things you do overnight. These things are not things you just pick it and catch it and end out of it. It's not, it doesn't work that way. If it does, not everybody, we would have called God a liar because he said a lazy man does not require food. And if you just pick it today and earn $1,000 tomorrow, you're lazy. And God doesn't waste. Have you seen anywhere he wasted? Even the 12 baskets that he did Sadaka, he told them to gather it. So if he will not throw away 12 baskets, don't think he will make you make billions overnight. He will permit it, his God, but it will not be for a waste, right? Now, lastly, tech. Uh, my, my slide is over. By the time you go to the next, it's just a thank you. Yeah. Lastly, one part of tech that we don't talk about is the ability it gives you to do the forbidden. As children of God, we would not, we would not, I didn't say we should not, we would not use our knowledge for fraud. We would not use our knowledge to embezzle money. Shall we know that money points and OP are software based? There are no physical environment to trade that money. That money you sent was not recorded in GC. But you don't see engineers siphoning it. So while I encourage you to pick up IT skills, because it can help you, please, please, I know I am a victim of it. There are times it will tempt you to just, we call it biscuit. It's biscuit coding. Just put a biscuit there. That one point something naira, who will see it? But trust me, when one point something naira times 10,000 people, that's money. Oh. Imagine you now live it for one whole month, and those 10,000 people send money in that one whole month, because people used to send money every day. But while you have that ability, the godliness in you is the point where you don't do it. Before they catch you, if you don't move your money, disappear. But the godliness in you is that when you have mastered, when you have known it, when you can do it and get away with it, still don't do it. That will be my last charge. Thank you very much. Can we put our hands together for him better? Can we put our hands together for him better? Can we put our hands together for him better? Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Mr. Adakole. I, there's no better way to start than from that point. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then the way he, he speaks as a believer. And that's also fundamental. You know, we said we're not going to bring professional talkers. I've said it here almost all the time that it's people who have resource, resources that should be resource person. <laughs> you, can't tell me, you can't tell me to have what you don't have. If somebody who is naked said, I will borrow you cloth, won't you run? Uh, hallelujah. And guess what? You know, I have just our second speaker is in the house. Our second speaker it is in the house. And just as Ada Kole said, he's the one who is going to speak to the main topic of this conference, which is succeeding where you are with what you have. You have heard me shouted for how many years about my billionaire friend. Now you have him in the house. <laughs> I, I, you know, 
Uh, he, he's my brother from another mother. He's a brother. You know what I said? My friends in this house, I make reference to two people, Barrister Jibo and Mr. Mark Michael Ogbadu. You know, and he's here. He's been a tremendous blessing to me. So I'm about sharing my personal blessing with you. So without taking much of your time, let's welcome Mark Michael Ogbadu with a standing ovation. Good evening, everybody. It's really a pleasure to be here. Oga, okay, thank you very much. Madam, thank you for having me. Uh, you don't take this for granted at all. OK, yeah, we can all be seated. And it's going to be very interactive. Um, it's a conference. It's a workshop. Now, where will the work? Now, we we go chop. But the truth of the matter is that um, I'm not going to be under this fire alone. So I'm going to involve, involve all of us here um, as we talk. Um, I, by way of introduction, my name is Mark Michael Obadu. Um, I was born about 40-something um, something years. It's, the something is not so big ago. And then, um, Yes, I lost my father three months after I was born. So we fell from a middle class um, family. We nose dived. Uh, we went beyond starting from the surface. So we started from the pit. So it wasn't easy. My childhood was a very, well, I can't tell because I didn't even have that experience. The people who had the experience uh, told me that what I was experiencing wasn't the, the teen. So uh, it was a very difficult one. I grew up um, eventually in the village, and then um, most of which uh, was with my grandma, my first business partner. Yeah, we started it together. So <clears throat> at some point, the, the house we could afford was such that um, when it's raining, you know, it was one small room, myself, my two elder sisters, and my mom. One small room where myself and my elder sister are first born. We had a mattress on the ground, so, and then my mom and my older sister on the bed. Um, when the rain begins, you will, we will have to stand from our mattress, fold it, and put a basin there. The structure up there was too weak for a carpenter to climb to fix. <laughs> so that was how it was. Um, <clears throat> yes, and then um, my sister finished her NC program, got a job, and then uh, we started. Uh, that was, she got a job supporting my mom who was working, and then working at the state level at that time was very difficult. Salary wasn't paid, and then, um, well, I was, I don't know, people said I was very serious from the beginning. I don't want to be serious here this evening, so please, um, I'm going to engage you and we are going to make it a little interactive. But the truth is this, um, <clears throat> I had that upbringing and then it wasn't comfortable. It wasn't what I wanted for me on the continuous basis and also for my children. So um, we are here to switch, and the title of the conference is um, Succeeding um, Where You Are With What You Have. You know, it takes power. The Bible said that God is the one who gives us power to make wealth, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so succeeding requires power. And then you don't need power for things that is very easy to push. I came here this evening with some power. <laughs> Not that kind of power, you know, <laughs> it's the power of God. So if you have to succeed and you need power to succeed, it means that success is not easy. Like you said, is that something you wake up and then overnight you see yourself, oh, I was like this yesterday and then uh, today this is why I, what I am overnight. No, it takes time. If it takes time and it's, it requires power, power, it means that you need 
to know your why for success. Okay, so um, who is there to push my slide for me? Yes. So, yeah, we are succeeding. We are, we are here to succeed from where we are with what we have. My, I'm, I look at it as um, leaving the position, the potential position we currently occupy and getting transformed to a high level of uh, performance. So that is what the conference is all about. The next slide, please. Yeah, so um, you need to find out why you have to succeed. Do you understand? If it's going to be um, so success for the sake of success, when the chips are down, um, you, you take off. You won't be able to push it through. So one thing I have discovered is that for everybody who is successful, um, you really need to find why. Why do I have to give it this um, walk? Why do I have to stay overnight? I just finished a course. I finished the course in February uh, with one institute in Silicon Valley online. And then it took me staying till like 3 a.m. sometimes to go to bed. There are some office hours. Uh, those guys will not understand that I'm in Nigeria and our timing is not the same thing. So I have to stay till 1, p, uh, 1 a.m. to take some office hours. Uh, and then they wanted you to be as active as uh, you should be, like you are with them when it's noon. But if you want to really be successful, then you need to find out your why. For example, do I still want my children to stay, live in a house where they have to get up in the middle of the night when it begins to rain and put a basin down and then just um, uh, slide or lean on the wall? Um, are, are we together here? You understand me? So you really need to look for your why. If your why is not strong enough, you won't be able to give it the push that it requires. Are we there? All right, so let's look at the next slide. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> where we are and what we ha have now is the launching pad for our next level. But the difficult thing is it, a lot of people do not really know where they are. You understand me? It's wanting to say, okay, we can succeed from where we are. But where are you? That is the question. Where are you? Where are you? So before we go on, I just want to ask some questions. Because there are a lot of um, small, small things I see on social media. And then some things, some act of mediocrity that some people have taken. I'm sorry. I'm going to be a little blunt. Um, but <laughs> please try and accommodate me for these few minutes. Um, who sells Akara? You know what Akara? Uh, who knows Akara here? I know that we are all Abuja people. We, who sells Akara here? Have you so, who has sold Akara before? Okay, very good. At, le at least also we also know people who sell Akara. Let me ask you this question. Um, can you sell Akara in any doctrine in Abuja and buy a house in Meitama? How long will it take? So, yeah, so <laughs> uh, let's begin to define what success is in the context of those of us that are here, because I know that I am not somewhere in um, where we came from. I'm not in Egume. If you know Egume, you know it. If you don't know it, um, <laughs> ask Victor Chapi later. He, he will tell you. You understand me? So uh, we are talking about success from the context of our environment, where we are. So where are you? Do you understand me? This evening, we are going to interrogate where we are in different aspects. So please, can you um, move me to the next slide? Um, a bit of um, where I'm coming from, I will tell you. Even in that house I told you of, there is one of my mom's friends or somebody she knows way back when they were younger who sells guguru when rent 
became due at some point. That was a woman we used to borrow money from to pay rent when salary has not been paid. That is how difficult it was. Do you understand? So now my objective here today is to help you um, understand your real location. Because if we have to succeed from where we are, we really need to understand where we are. To make you understand the asset and the resources at your disposal, to make you realize what time it is. Yes, uh, you need to know what time it is because what worked yesterday won't work now. I have it somewhere in the slide that if you cannot digitally place it, forget about scaling it. And if you can't scale it, forget about um, your success will be too small. Yes, you can be successful. So like I was saying, how many Akara can you sell to send your children to Covenant University? Do you understand me? So when you see, when I see graduates, I said, okay, yes, uh, despise not the day of your little beginning. There are some beginnings that are too little in this age and time. Do you understand me? I saw one girl the other time. She said, oh, after, grad after graduating, um, no job, whatever. I've gone back to the village. I'm frying Gary. There are other ways to go around Gary and not you going to the farm, bringing in the cassava, frying it, and then taking it to the village market. For God's sake, please, um, let's square up. See, <clears throat> I keep telling people, I'm going to have this uh, um, conference, uh, my presentation is going to be like a conversation, so we will interact. Do you understand me? I have told people before, please, we should know the problem that we really have. Is it that there is no job or uh, we are finding it difficult because of who we are to get the job. Because why should, I'm not saying you should despise the people who are doing it. I'm telling you one thing, there are people at certain level that um, frying gari at a particular quantity and taking it to the village, to the local market and selling it is a lot of success. But uh, we are not defining success um, using that background. The background we are using to define success um, here this evening is different. The background of those of us who, by grace and the virtue of the help of God, we are in Abuja. We have seen the light a bit. You understand me? And then why are we minimizing ourselves when we can optimize the opportunity we have? Um, so that is the question. Next slide. So, well, my other point. Please go back by one point. Go back, go back to the other slide, please, for me. Yeah, so I will make us realize or want us to think about the time that it is. I want then uh, move forward to help us appreciate the huge opportunity we already have to scale from where we are with what we have into high performance and purpose. Are we together? All right, so um, let's move to the, okay, the other point, the other slide. Now, where are you? We will astray our physical location because that has a lot to do with um, the opportunities and the choices we make. We also want to astray our occupational location. These, I will talk a lot about this um, because um, every transformation I have experienced and I'm experiencing that I think also I will experience is as a result of the fact that I worked somewhere before um, because I have looked and um, up to this moment I have done a couple of businesses. I, I can't really disconnect whatever um, success I have seen and then the market and the customers and the client base I have um, assessed from the places I have worked before, particularly one place that I have worked before. So I think it's a very key thing. If you really want to launch into um, um, success from where we are, um, the question, where are you, was a question that was asked in Genesis. And the intention of the question is to align man, realign man with his purpose. When God came around, he didn't see man where he placed him. And then that was when he asked him, where are you? So I hope that um, at the end of this um, 
conference, we should be able to get ourselves realigned with what our true calling and purpose is. You understand? So we also will look at our mental location. What are you thinking? What is your mindset? What are your perception about possibilities? Do you understand me? You can have a warp, negative, laid back mindset and you think that that's the raw material for succeeding. It's very difficult. You are in a very, very difficult location and then succeeding from that point will be very difficult. Your emotional location, you understand me? How do you, how is your current emotional state? How can you leverage it to make progress? So we will look at that. And I will try to be fast. I think I'm speaking too slowly. And then your social uh, location. Will you be able to, are you able to leverage on your network and communities to make progress? Um, your physical environment affects your opportunities and your choices. Yes, but in 2024, yeah, we are in 2024, um, you can actually do a lot from anywhere with what you have got. I told you I just finished a course with an institute in Silicon Valley. I wasn't even in Silicon before descending into the valley. <laughs> do you understand me? <laughs> so I did it from here. That is the possibility we have in this age and time. Um, how can you leverage your physical locations to tap into the local market demands and talent, navigate competition, and, cap and capitalize on infrastructure for your operational excellence and economic success. You need to understand, you need to have a very good, go back to my, the other slide, you need to have a very good understanding of your local market. You need to, if you really have to make success, I will bring it down to our level, um, and then ask some question. Um, if you really have to make success, you, would really, you really need the understanding of your local market, because every development, every computer program you write, or every uh, product you develop, you manufacture, starts from the market. If you do not understand what the market need, then what are you doing? What are you building and who are you building for? The Bible said that the labor of a fool wears him out because he doesn't know the way to the city. The city here rep represents the market. So you can actually push in a lot of effort and then um, do a lot of things, um, burn the night candle, do whatever. If you can't find the right market for your idea, for your product, then you're wasting time. You are wasting time. Now, um, I have, just to carry us along, I have one question and I really need someone to answer that for me. Uh, if you get your answer correctly, uh, you have a reward. Um, I have some questions this evening. You have a reward. Is, um, the reward is about, um, uh, mo monetarily, it's about 25K, but I'm not giving you the cash. Um, you go and take an online course, and I'll pay for it. 25, <laughs> yeah, 25,000. Now, um, I know that we, let, let's, let's start. Uh, for example, I will uh, just ask this question randomly. If you are a maize farmer and your physical location is Abuja, for example, uh, when will you sell your produce? Will you wait to for the corn to mature, dry it, take it to where you will mill it, and then you take the, the, the seed, the dry seed, to the market? Or will you sell it to the people who roast and um, sell boiled corn on the street? How do you think you can actually maximize um, revenue or your profit? At what stage? I need an answer. I just want us to be on the same page. Understanding your local market. Please, who will give me? I will call somebody. I'll just look for one person, point the person if I don't see any hand up. Okay, you'll be. Okay, not be you. 
please, who is there? I, I'm seeing one hand there. Okay, children. Okay, so who is? Okay, yes, I, I'm with you, ma. Your name? My name is Fubia Bodundi. So if, if I'm selling, okay, I should come forward. Uh, okay. Okay, you can talk from there, but just let, let, let everybody hear you. All right, my name is Fumia Bodundi. Now, if I'm selling corn and I harvest the corn, if you are, yeah, yeah, farming. I'm selling maize. If I'm a maize, if I'm a farmer, yes, and I'm selling maize, I will harvest the maize and then dry it, mill it, and keep it and wait for a season where maize is cast or not in season and when it will be expensive and that's the time i would sell it okay so there is another person another hand up there please let's be fast my time is going i will bill you if you take too much of my time okay. i like converting everything to money um good evening everyone um a friend of mine recently asked me to well, I say make a flyer for her because she, she wants to sell farm produce and the stuff is not actually here in Abuja yet, but she's already making plans to start advertising the stuff she's about to sell. So from that, I would, if I was the farmer in that situation, I will advertise whatever I'm planning to sell before it even gets um, to maturity. And I believe that even before then, I will already have serious-minded people who want to buy what I'm selling before I actually have it. So that immediately after my harvest, I will clear my, let's say, my resource bank and everything. That's my own okay. okay, yes, sir. Uh, is, is he a resource person? Uh, okay. okay, so can, can I reduce the question a little? Yes. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Um, do you have a different opinion? Yes, why he has done that? Why he has done that? After the market is not by you, so you sell what is to be sold immediately and redo. Thank you. So that is the answer. Unfortunately, um, <laughs> um, nobody from the audience, not my... Uh, <laughs> now... Um, let me let me do this very quickly because um, I just don't want to rush us through this um, phase and then it's like uh, okay he exhausted his time and then uh, we didn't get anything from here. Now understanding your local market, your physical environment. Do you know how many uh, corn? How, I don't know how, what you call it. Who is in agri here? This the one you uh, and the cob. Yes, the cob is. It. Do you know how many cob of corn you have to dry to make one mudu? Do you understand me? Do you know how much is one mudu? Look, if you are in Abuja environment, and if I am, yeah, I, I'm farming corn here, I will harvest it when it is good to be boiled and roasted, and I will sell it. Because at that point, one corn, by the time you sell two or three, you have made money for one mudu, isn't it? But you, uh, you can do like 15 or more before you get, more than 15 before you get mudu. So to optimize profit, um, if you are farming corn, now this is, I'm not asking you people to go and farm corn, but you should know how to apply it to what you do. To optimize profit, optimize revenue, if you are farming corn in Abuja, for example, then um, harvest it when people can eat it because one, the demand is more. You have women roasting, you have them boiling it, and then when you go to shop right, you see fresh corn that they package in the freezers, in the fridge, and they are selling. You understand me? So you make more money. Understanding your local market is very key for you to succeed from where you are into um, a high level of um, performance and making more money. Do we understand that? You understand? So, yeah, so um, let's move to the, the next slide. Unfortunately, I don't know. This man is a big man. <laughs> yeah, he's a big man. All right, so, um, yeah, so here I will take some time and then try to explain some things to us. Your work will always bring you before great personalities. 
Do we understand that? You understand me? See that a man who is diligent in his work, he will stand before king and not ordinary people. So um, <clears throat> this is it for me. This is it for me. I had the opportunity of working in a bank uh, for six, six years. The first day I got my employment letter, one of my cousins was squatting with me, and then I came back home and I told her, yeah, I've received the employment letter for the bank. It's one bank uh, with international kind of um, <clears throat> flavor and all of that. But I'm not going to be long here. He said, ah, ah, because my name there is Akoji. What kind of talk is this? People get job and tell them, uh, uh, pray that, okay, here I will last, I will do that. I say, no, 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 no. I'm not going to last here. Um, the question, the, the, the point is this, from the beginning, I know what I wanted. I know the problem and the responsibilities I have to carry. And then, um, then it was 118,000 Naira. So how am I going to um, build a house for my mom? You know, it's a, a key problem I needed to solve and then take care of some other things. So I told no, I'm going to use this job to get into what I want. I want, I want to make money. I want to do business. I want to have that freedom. You understand me? That is what I want to do. I say, okay, well, okay. So what do I have to tell you here? If you are walking somewhere, you really need to define what your location is in that your office. Are you in a training or you are in your life's employment? Are you there? Are you there to receive some training, or that is where your life's assignment is? You understand me? Is it a training? Yeah, there are two things. Either you are receiving training, or it's your life's job. You, one thing is very key. You need to learn. You need to learn. There are some things I will say here, but um, I use my capitalist mind to say it. The pastor will dress it, and then it will suit our purpose very soon. Um, if that is your life's job, please learn the politics of workplace. Play it very well and climb the ladder. Yeah, that's the truth. Learn the politics of workplace. Play it very well. Outsmart your competitors there and climb the ladder. You understand me? Do it with the spirit of God in your mind. I don't have so much of explanation to give you on that one, pastor will tell you better. Do you understand me? So that, 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 that time of, uh, oh, I'm a Christian, and because I'm a Christian, that is, mm -mm. If you need to record somebody, carry a camera and record somebody, that guy that is going to gossip and, and say some things, oh, okay, this is a true position of what happened. I have evidence. Are you there? Uh -huh. So you need to climb, except, uh, see, we have, <laughs> you understand me? We have actually kept ourselves in some level of mediocrity because we are Christian for too long. So you should understand what happens, um, how you can climb. Yeah, there are politics. Play it. You understand me? Play it and climb. Play it and climb. Then if you are there as um, a trainee, please, you should know what to learn. I will give an example if you are in a bank. For example, and you are an IT person, and you know that that is not your, your life's job. You just want to use that as a bridge into what you want to, to link you to what you want to do. Then you should know the, the things to pick. You should know the areas to concentrate. You understand me? You should know the processes, the procedures, and all of that, that you should pick, quickly pick, and then make progress from there. Make progress from there. You understand? Make progress from there. And then also you have, if you want to establish business, sell this, do the other one, and if that is your focus, then you, I think you will need the customers on your side more than you will need the institution. No, I'm not saying you shouldn't be diligent in your work. But you know that if I will give, a, who is a banker here? I will, I will still give an example. That, that is the place where, not the place where I worked before. Now that one I know. Do you understand me? If you are, I moved from the bank into real estate, and I know that I needed those people to buy real estate from my hand, so I paid attention to them. I, I would serve them. 
Do you understand me? And then respect yourself while you are doing that. Respect yourself while you are doing that. You want to do business with these people. You are not trying to convert them to your family members. So don't be over familiar. Oh, guys, see, madam, that day, she don't carry belay, she all those nonsense. Stop it. You understand me? Nobody is interested. You understand me? When you, when you become too familiar, when you get yourself into them too much to that, you can't negotiate. You can't face somebody that uh, you are asking for, for money. Oh, God, my house rent is expired. Oh, respect yourself now. Do you understand me? So you should be deliberate about it. Just be very deliberate about it. Please, um, I want to see the time oh, so that... Um, Try to win the trust of your customers. Up to this moment, I gave one wine out day before yesterday. Christy and the other accountant were in my house. So we had a meeting. So while they were going, I asked the other guy, do you take alcohol? He said yes. So I gave him wine that I was giving. I, I didn't know the value. I was in the supermarket in the evening yesterday, and I checked. Oh, this wine, where is it? I saw 46,000 naira. Now, this, this person who gives me this kind of wine anytime I go to his house is a customer I met in the bank. You will know who I'm talking about. His stakes and his business concern in my hand runs into billions of naira. Do you understand me? Now, who will give a beggar money to keep? You understand me? So when you are hungry, please address your hunger. Don't expose it. Oh, guy, I want, uh, uh, my wife don't carry belle. Uh, my house rent is expired and all those things. No, no, it's not necessary. If you really want to end their trust. Do you understand me? So you respect yourself before these people. Uh, my brother is looking for a job. Uh, and then they will give your brother a driver's job. The salary is 40,000 naira. And then when you cut a deal or you do an assignment that you're supposed to ask for a fee of four million naira, you can't ask for it because they've already given him a job. I don't know, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Do you understand me? So um, in the process of, oh, this um, place I am working is not what I want to do. I am using this place to bridge as a bridge, as a link to where I'm going. If you are there, you need the trust of um, the customer of that organization, don't go and steal your boss's customer. That is not what I am saying. But if you service them, you understand me? The day you leave, I'll give you an example. I did one fixed income security investment for somebody when I was in the bank. And then it was, um, I think it was about $500,000. He's supposed to receive coupon every year. That is the interest they pay him for that investment. And then the first coupon he got, he called me and said, uh, one money just came into my account. I, I don't know who sent it. I said, OK, I'm not around now. I will check when I get back to the branch. And I went there, I checked. I said, oh, God, okay, that is the investment we did now. That is the coupon, the yearly payment. And I said, Mark, is this thing true? Does it work? I was just wondering, I said, ah, you gave, you signed document, we transferred $500,000 offshore, and you're asking me if it works, but then it was done on me. He didn't do that investment because he understood it. He did it because I was the one who sold it to him. Are you there? And then, that was when um, I started seeing, I said, wow. $500,000 converted to Naira. I sell a property of 500000 to this man. I make 5% on it. Wow, how much is my salary? <laughs> Do you understand me? So at that point, respect yourself. Then um, I think we should quickly move to the next slide because of time. Um, now, your mental location. Mentality is everything. You understand me? The Bible said we should guide our mind with every diligence because out of our heart with every diligence because out of it are the issues of life. Um, I will just rush through this. Um, you can't be thinking poverty. You understand me? And then you think um, you will wake up one day and find a bill of dollar in front of your... No, it doesn't work that way. You can't be better than the content of your thought. 
Do you understand me? So if you see failure, in your mind, I guarantee you that you wake up into failure. I have shared a couple of stories with your, the man of God here. How some things that would have killed somebody, <laughs> actually, what happened, I'll just you. You understand me? You, because my mind is not like this thing, no, no, no. It's not in my mind, it's not in my mind. I'll give you an example. I had one world that walking for me in my house just last week. And then they were all in the house, everybody was in the house. I went out, I saw a car I liked, and I bought it, and I drove into the house. Uh, everybody all got, thank you, ah, congratulations, do this, do no. And then the guy said something. He said, this car, is, that is his own prayer, oh, congratulations, this car will not be your coffin. And I, and I told him, <laughs> I said, until God realizes that this, until God take out this mentality, this kind of thinking from this guy's mind, he, won't, he may not have money enough to buy a car because God wouldn't want you to get what will kill you. What is wrong with the alternative? Do you understand me? So we should, um, we should be careful what we are thinking. You understand me? We see it. We see what we are thinking. I think I jumped something. I, I need to go back um, there to yeah, occupational location. We'll come back to this and then briefly rush through it. I have a tax then that I want us to do together. Can you go back one slide? Please, can you go back one slide for me? Who is there? Okay, so um, at this point, there are times that where we are actually doesn't look like it's not what we want, and it's not obviously like a link to where we are heading. But I think that everything is linked. Like he said, if you are a child of God, God wouldn't take you to where um, he wouldn't be able to link you to what your heart desires Ah, Do you understand me? So now, let me ask. We have lawyers here. This question is not for our mama and our daddy. Um, it's for any other person. If you are a lawyer and then suddenly you find yourself in an organization, perhaps like an NGO, are you with me? You want to do I don't know, the, you want to practice the profession, law. You understand me? And then all you see yourself doing day and night is writing memo, writing proposal to get funds for this, to get this for that and whatever. How do you think that kind of a lawyer will be able to bridge into his life's assignment from that kind of location? What are the opportunities? What do you think are the opportunities in that kind of environment for that kind of lawyer? I need somebody to answer me. Hmm? 25,000 Naira Udemy cost credit. Who is there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, I think the um, opportunities in that um, kind of environment is that um, the person will understand where to go, like um, writing proposals to get money. And when the person stand on his or her own, will be able to do the same for his or her personal business or whatever the person. Very correct, to. but it's not completely correct. Hmm? This person doesn't want to run an NGO. My sister, can we continue this conversation? This person doesn't want to run an NGO. So, which other business? How do you think that being there can link him into practicing law? Let, let me just allow someone else. Okay, who is there? So I, I know about a few people who have been wrongly convicted. And I know that uh, lawyers do pro bono cases. So as a lawyer working in an NGO, I would learn, you know, how to go about applying for these loans and then use them to, for these grants, and then use them to help people in prison, because I know that this That's the answer. Thank you very much. That is 100%. <laughs>
Are we, uh, yeah, so your online credit, 25,000 naira on my account. You understand me? So you have the opportunity to learn how to raise funds there. You already have uh, done your law school and you understand that. Um, if you have not practiced before, maybe you do some internship somewhere else briefly after that place and then swing, switch. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So um, everything can be figured out. That's one thing I believe. Everything can be figured out. And if God placed you there, then there is a purpose for you there. Are we together? So we move to mentality. So yeah, I, I was not going to, I was rushing, so, but thank you. If I didn't come back, you wouldn't have uh, made this point. Can we move forward? So yeah, so everything about you, whatever you are now, this may not go down well with some people, but it's been as a result of what you've been thinking. That's true. Do you understand me? You know, growing up in those days, I used to lock myself up when I have the opportunity, and then I figure out how I am capable of building a house. I will do this, I will do the other one. See, if you are hungry, if you are very, very hungry, and then you're walking in the dark, and somebody throws a bundle of money at you, you will pick race, you are broke, you, you don't have money, and then somebody just throw money on you, you just run away. If you are not looking. I don't know. So without the right mentality, you are just like somebody who is walking in the dark, who is hungry, who is broke, and then they just throw money at and then run away. So you have to, we, you have to purge yourself, renovate your thinking, you understand me, and put up the right thinking, yeah. Some of us already have the opportunity in places where we work or by the virtue of the business we do, but we spend to impress people. You understand me? We do not take our financial management uh, uh, very well. Some of us have very warped idea, uh, mindset about opportunities. We miss it when it comes. Yeah, connected to that is um, your emotional location. Your emotional location. The next slide. Um, no, no, not this, the, the one you just left. Emotional location. Now, see, <laughs> I, <laughs> my friend knows I look for trouble sometimes. But as much as I look for trouble, I know they find soldier trouble. Though. Soldier stop me, I go wind down. You understand me? Come out of the car, I go come out of the car. Do you understand me? So you should know where to fight and where not to fight. You shouldn't carry your grigara graga to anywhere. So be emotionally intelligent. Just you should know which fight is, is wise to undertake. Um, things like, yeah, mentality, emotional intelligence, they are connected a bit. I don't want to be late, and I want to be there early. Do you know that you're saying the same thing? But one actually attracts. Are you there? Something negative, and then the other one is telling you or setting you up to be there early. So by the time you are having that dialogue, that you're talking to yourself, that by the time you are in that space, by yourself. Please let positive things replace those warped things. Um, somebody told me at the time that in our family, we don't, nobody is successful at doing business. Somebody, yeah, one of my uncle told me that when I left, uh, Nami, Nami get a job where I live for, but nobody didn't look for the job for me. I got that job. And then they said, ah, you're doing business. In our family, nobody becomes successful doing business. You understand? Um, well, I, I have not experienced that. <clears throat> Let, let's move to the next one and very quickly. Please, what time do I have left? No, 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 less. Okay, so I was 
Can somebody tell me, can we switch to the timer briefly? Okay, uh, just tell me about the time. Okay, thank you. So, um, yeah, because I need some time here too. Yeah, leverage your relationship, all those ones na grammar. So I will share the distance. But the truth is this, who are your friends? Who are your friends? Who talk to you? Who are you talking to? <clears throat> Those that work with the wise will be wise. But if your friends are fools, you will suffer destruction. So I am very deliberate about the association I keep. Yes, I don't know how I came about that, but even from secondary school, what I used to tell some of my friends is that you they follow them, you they pass in the exam, but you go fill your own. <laughs> you they fill your own. Do you understand me? So at that point where I had, I thought, yeah, I had all the time. I was being youthful. Um, I was in the secondary school, yes. So I had friends that we used to go to the girls' school. Uh, I have friends that we used to trick people to the school farm and flog them very well. And then I have friends that um, we do academics. When we get home or after school, we go and hide in the bush and do mathematics and chemistry. I read economics anyway, but uh, till like, um, when I was in the university, I was still taking, um, my roommates were doing chemistry, organic chemistry to, in their, they were, I think they are 200 level. And because I did sciences in the, school, in the secondary school, and I did it very well. Do you understand me? So who are your friends? And now there is no time. So getting, keeping this one, keeping the other one. Mm -mm. And sometimes we think we have all the times. But you know, <laughs> the reality of, this, um, of our place is that you know how difficult it is, even not for Pahava children now. Uh, before you finish school, you don't mature, <laughs> you understand me? So you don't really have all the time. Don't keep people who have nothing to add to you. Do you understand me? Uh, uh, yeah, so we don't know where we are going to meet tomorrow. I will tell you the way it is, treat you the way I should treat you, because if we meet tomorrow and you are better, then God would have corrected your head at that point. And then if you want to be true to yourself, you will know that those cheats I was treating, those things I was trashing, those reasons why I couldn't be your friend were right reasons. So we can become friends at that level. Otherwise, there are some mindset, some kind of warp mindset that some people will carry. And then the fact that... Um, we don't know where we are going to meet tomorrow. I need a social network. We need to do this and what have you. You carry people along and years of your life will be wasted. When you realize it, it will be too late. So who are your friends? What do you discuss with your friends? What do you people talk about? Don't keep toxic relationship. Um, value your time, value your time. And then you are not called to help everybody. Some people are in your life to sap you. Do you understand me? You should define your responsibility squarely and budget them. You should know when you are already exceeding your budget of kindness. I'm sorry to say it, but that's what it is. Um, having you, yeah, I, I, I tell people and I say it, it's one of, you can't, don't, don't use your, somebody called me and said, oh, I took my brother with me to Kano, he's my friend, or so all my schoolmates, and then the brother impregnated somebody, and then they caught this man, he's in this, he needs money to, I said, no, 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 I can't be responsible for how your father brought up that child, 
No, it's not, it's not my business. Am I being difficult? Mm -mm. Why is it, why is, where is the place of somebody who raped someone? Uh -huh. So let the law correct the person. But if you have to do anything to get the person out, I am not responsible for how that person was brought up. Am I saying we shouldn't be kind? If you really have access to spend, there are people in the hospitals. Go to the orphanage. Also, look around. There are people, some people should be in school. Help them. Do you understand me? So um, we want to keep very good social network. We want to, if you keep wasting your resources, succeeding will become very difficult for you. There was a time, I think I've told you that before, and then money comes into your hand, it's going, pia, mm, pia, yeah. I, I, I couldn't just imagine what I have done for myself or what I have used the money for. But when you start a project, and then you become disciplined with how you spend the money, you will see that oh, the house will leave foundation and then get to Linton level and then get to some level. And then before you know it, you're done with it, and then you are putting it in the market, and then you're collecting value, uh, additional value on what he has spent. So, um, and then don't be a burden to your friend. Or don't be burden to your friends. Don't corner people and extort money in the name of friendship for them, from them. Don't form that habit. Anybody who is heading upward is like I said before, who want to trust a beggar with resources? We give arms to beggars. But when you are looking for somebody to give five million, ten million to, oh, I need you to do this for me. Will you consider that brother who is already always cornering you whenever the service is over and then asking you for transport money home? And then you give him today, tomorrow he's still there in that condition and uh, all of that. Associate with people who can inspire you. You understand me? Yeah, give off mediocrity. Like I, when I started, there are some things that doesn't, those things do not make sense to me. I want to start from here. Mm -mm, there are other places to start from. You understand? I have, a, okay, good. Um, <clears throat> so, this is... Um, the X-ray of our various location, and then for you to really make headway in life, all this location will have to align and cooperate with you. Do you understand me? You may be in a very good space in terms of location, physical location, or you may even have a very good job. Perhaps it's your life's calling, or where a very good bridge into the thing you want to do for yourself. But if your mentality is not right, there's obviously nothing you can make out of that space. Do you understand me? If you are keeping the wrong association. Uh, when somebody comes, you know, the one funny thing is that somebody, <laughs> I see people who are not doing, have not done anything for themselves, coming to tell you about business opportunities. Uh, why not? I told him, and then they are getting angry. I told him the other time he refused to put money there. Put money there? How? Where? What? Who told you? Why? Do you understand me? So you should know who, who, who you keep around. I know of someone who, who was keeping a, a number of friends in the house. And then every, before the end of the month, he is complaining. And then, see... At some point, I was a fi personal financial consultant in the bank. So let me do some analysis for you. You are not married. You are staying in a two-bedroom. Do you understand me? And then um, in the evening after work, when I go go joint. <laughs> do you understand me? And then, and this is your salary. You will get into problem. So be, be real. Don't live fake life. Do you understand me? Why we can't tell some people off is because of what we have told them we have when we, when you are a rookie in the bank learning tellering, and then you're telling them <laughs> you are the GM. <laughs> My salary is this. You are just doing yourself. So that is not a position to be for too long. 
Now, so let's go back. Uh, wh what time is it? Not this, this. <laughs> hmm? So it is time for you to upgrade what you have. Leveraging technology for success. Hmm? Thank God we've been told about how we can use technology to actually do what we can do. I told you, you can't make money frying Akara from one junction, or even if you think you are in the city center. How much are you going to sell? How, what is the sales per day? And then what is the revenue? Eventually, what is your profit? You understand me? So you put all of that together. But um, I know there are a lot of ladies here, and then caterers as well. We, I used to see this thing, and then my wife used to buy it. They call it cake mix. You know what it is, right? Everything together, you quickly put it, and then you have, a, you have cake or pancake and all of that. All those mix are there. Akara mix is not very common. I have not seen one before. Do you understand me? So, yeah, they're saying that um, you should have small beginning. Yes, there's nothing wrong with small beginning. Yes, yeah, start. Understand what it takes to make Akara. Perhaps you should try it a little bit to have a feel. So know which of the mix, as in you do it, that, but you should be able to move yourself to a point where you begin to think of Akara mix. Do you understand me? Pap, thank you. Thank you. So that is what you can scale. But the same pap, by the time you are selling your pap, and then you are doing cocoa in one junction, and then you are telling me that um, they said we should start from somewhere. Yes, I don't have issues with where you're starting, but where are you ending it? How can you scale cocoa as in when you make it or the main um, pap? But like he's saying, I have seen pap mix, um, shop rights, um, H medics, everywhere they are there. So it's the same pap. That can be exported. You understand me? You can deploy the economic of large scale production doing that. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So I'm not trying to abuse starting small. I'm not saying that it's wrong. But please, there is no time. Don't waste so much of time there. Um, it's AI time. <laughs> so <laughs> do you understand me? Yes, because. Even the superior level of intelligence we think we have as human has become rubbish. Do you understand me? So go and read your book and do what you need, write whatever you want to. The guy who can write that prompt will just give a prompt to the AI and then it's done. I interviewed somebody. The person is working for me. Luckily, the person is not here, so I can say what I want to say. <laughs> and then. I had committed myself, uh, this is how much we will pay you, this is what you will be doing. It's just about, um, she just took her last, her first salary this, this month, she's been paid. And then, do you know ChatGPT? Is there a way you think you can deploy ChatGPT to do your work better? I said, oh God, what is ChatGPT? And then at that moment, <laughs> I was going to withdraw my commitment, but, uh, <laughs> I know, I know I have a pastor's friend, so <laughs> mercy. <laughs> I deployed mercy. Otherwise, leave it for me. Uh, Madam, please, you can leave at this moment. We'll talk again. <laughs> Do you understand me? Don't, don't be local, please. Things are happening too fast. So if you want to succeed from where you are, please refine what you are carrying. You understand me? Uh, don't tell me you want to go and do MSc statistics when you know nothing about big data and data analysis. You understand me? It will pay you more. I have a friend who just finished a course. While he was doing one of the projects, he got a job. 70, I think $78,000 per annum, uh, working three hours for three days in a week. So please. Where do you want to go and deploy your MSc statistics when you do not know how to manipulate spreadsheets? Hmm? I remember when we were, I was in economics in school and then they give you one long thing um, to suffer you and then you go and regress it using SPSS and then the professor will tell you that what's the meaning of this. Do you understand? I was talking with one of my aunties, she's a lecturer in one of the universities, heading the faculty of, 
I think postgraduate something something, I don't know what it is, and said they are looking for students, master students and what have you. I said you should do online, you people should start online course now. He said, ah, some of these professors there do not even know how to use computer. I said, why, why, why are they still there? You should, you should sack them. Do you understand? Pay them good, let them go, and then um, do what you need to do. You have to leverage technology. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm not going to waste time on the next slide. Okay, this slide in 2024, if you will not align it digitally, you cannot scale it. And if you cannot scale it, your success may be too small. I'm a doctor, you, yeah, even lawyers, you understand me? Everything now can be aligned digitally. So refine what you have, upgrade what you have. If you are a doctor now, um, <clears throat> a lot of things are happening in the medical field that is um, tech driven. A lot of things are happening everywhere. So if you can't technically align it, if you can't digitally align it, just forget about it. You won't be able to scale it. Next slide. So how digital technology propels success? I think most of that is in my brother's slide, so but, um, I will share the link as well so that everybody can look at it. You can use it for cost reduction. So now that you know where you are and how you can take advantage of your location for success, now that you can identify what you have, given where you are, and where, now that you are ready to upgrade what you have digitally, what's the next thing? The next slide. Oh yeah, so this shouldn't be the next thing. What happened to my slide? Okay, yeah, this is supposed to be the next, the next thing. Set smart <coughs> goals for success. Specific goals, measurable goals, the goals that are achievable, very realistic goals. You understand me? I want to build a house for everybody in Abuja, and then from the house, they can just, there are some goals that are stupid, and then doesn't, they do not make sense. I had somebody who was, um, he had a startup. Then what is your startup into? His startup has to do with the road construction. As a startup, road construction, and then he said he can use um, um, Web3 technology to assay or gar. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? Do you understand me? Read, read. Everything is there online now. Uh, information is um, more available now than ever before. You understand me? You don't really even need to open one encyclopedia and go to the other one. Mm -mm. Just talk to, just carry your phone, bring up your GPT-4, and then put, use your voice. Uh, how can I do this and do the other one, Oga? And then if you have something, you can test it there. You understand me? It should be, it should be realistic. And then put, uh, interrogate it against time so that you know you're making progress. Do you understand me? So, yeah, so we'll go back to the other slide. Yes, so this is, um, if you become successful, you know, it's one thing to actually hit it. It's another thing to keep it. So it's difficult to become successful, and it's difficult to keep it. Okay, from maybe your occupational location, there are some things that will hit you. Some of those money that people give you, or some sudden success you achieve monetarily, some of them are not for they are not for you to spend. Please, you should know which one is normal for you. You should know the one that is a windfall. Save your windfall. If they call you from your state and then suddenly make you a commission of the of agriculture or finance or whatever you or you become um, a minister or one thing or the other. You should know that that is not normal. This, that is not your regular. That is not you practicing law or you being a medical doctor or you doing some kind of business. Even business, most of the 
monies you make in business. Property. If you sell property of one billion naira, and then you have commission of hundred million or two hundred million, that's not normal. That's windfall. Don't eat it. Don't go and spend it. You understand me? That is why I get them before. <laughs> I get them before. No be property. Do you understand me? So we should know which is. Yeah, this is my regular income. Um, at the base, this is what I make from my business. At the base, this is what my salary is. But those other things are things that you put together, harness them, and use them, use that resources to launch yourself into the next phase of your life. Do you understand me? I just want us to see that we are successful. If, for example, if what you are doing, uh, what you have, uh, what you're doing if it suddenly stops today, the, have you accumulated or given what you have seen and what you have saved, how long will it take you? Do you understand me? Success is not something that just hits you. Um, you. You have to be deliberate about it. You have to be very deliberate about it. So you need to improve yourself. You need to learn, keep learning and unlearning some things. You understand me? And then, yes, it's going to be difficult sometimes. There are times that um, you go to bed in the night, and then sleeping becomes very difficult. It's still part of it. I used to tell someone, I said, if, if I don't have anything that my mind is working on part time, I get really bored. It's like I'm sick. You understand me? If, if I can't forget myself in my home office and then like four o'clock or three o'clock and then uh, my wife will just come, oh guy, you've not had your bed since money. <laughs> Do you understand me? If I don't have any reason to, 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 to do that, it's like I'm not feeling fine. It's gonna be difficult. There are some very hard knots you have to crack along the way, but just keep at it. That's the principle. Just keep at it. So thank you, everybody. It's really a great time being here. And I sincerely appreciate the opportunity um, to have this conversation with you. Um, thank you very much, my Lord. I appreciate you. Madam, thank you so much. Thank you. Hallelujah. I believe we can clap better. I believe we can clap better. You know, the, the difference between success and failure is the information that we're exposed to. It's uh, I didn't expect him to talk like this. This is not the, you know, the, he say he's not the religious person. He has a pastor friend. You know, the, when we talk, it, uh, when I'm broke, I told you several times, I'll just carry my phone. I'll drive my car to his former rice factory. The physics he, do, he did in secondary school, he used to fabricate machines. He's that kind of person. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. God bless you, sir. Now, uh, we will still oblige us to answer some questions. Uh, okay. So uh, let's welcome uh, Minister Chioma. She takes us forward. Good evening, Your Excellencies. I hope we're having an amazing, amazing time in God's presence. Thank you so much to our seasoned speakers. It was really awesome. So now it's time for our question and answers. I think that uh, ushers have already passed around papers for questions or concerns that you have. Our speakers will be uh, gracious enough to answer every question that we direct at them. I think I already have a first uh, question, but please, if you can try and make it snappy so that we can progress forward from here. Uh, the first question for tonight goes to our tech speaker. Thank you once again, sir, for that session. But some of us would like to know, uh, just to give us an idea, sir, for motivation. Could you tell us how much you earn yearly? Yes. 
an idea for me. I don't know how many persons want to know. For people who want to know why they want to go into tech, learning code is not easy. I read computer science and I slept all through the coding class because uh, that thing is hectic. So we need to know why should we be motivated? I mean, you're an example. You've spoken to us. Let's have an idea. Okay. Uh, we have tax, and this is recorded. But my current tax to Nigerian government is 100,000. Wow. Right? That's... <laughs> <laughs> no, Naira. We are in Nigeria. Anything I earn outside Naira is not the government's business. But from what I earn in Nigeria is 100,000 Naira for my task. And I, in fact, it's, it's taken before my pay comes in. Right? Leave what there is a possibility that I am earning outside Nigeria. Possibility is recorded, remember? <laughs> <laughs> but my tax now is about the amount. Thank you very much, sir. At least that should give us an idea so that we can know if for, for those of us who are thinking, do I go into tech? Is it worth it? It is truly, truly worth it. And like he told us in the time when he was speaking to us. Tech is one or one of the uh, sectors where you could actually work from wherever you are, from the comfort of your home. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, this second question goes to our second speaker. Please, sir, the person is asking, how can a small business owner raise funds to expand their business? How can a small business owner raise funds to expand their business? Okay. Small business. One, there are very formal and structured channels. I try and look for an accelerator's program to join. They'll train you too, but your business, now I, I can't find any cohort or accelerators for businesses that are not tech driven of lately. Do you understand me? So that is why this is time. Uh, the time is a digit. You really need to align whatever you're doing digitally to be able to secure funding. Are you with me now? And then I had a meeting. I had a meeting with one of my mentors this afternoon. And then the question is, uh, yeah, I was going to give justification for if what funding I turned down, I, I told you, right? Yeah, reason is because it was coming as loan and it was dollar denominated and then um, I turned it down. The question now is, do you really need external funding or can you bootstrap from where you are? You understand me? They, if you're looking for funding, um, it all depends. Where are you coming from? Why can't people even trust you with their own funds? That is one thing. So if you have people who can trust you, if what you're doing is viable, please justify it. And then um, people are looking for where to keep money. But if you don't have that, then you have to um, um, take yourself through the accelerators program. Uh, Founders Institute is currently taking people. So you can look for Founders Institute and get registered. Uh, Bobak is taking people currently, so you can also get registered and go through the process uh, of structuring your company, your startup. You understand me? And then some of them are funding, some wouldn't fund you, but they will prep you for um, seed accelerators or for some other pre-seed accelerators where you can get funding. Um, but let me be true to you, it's not easy. It's not very easy. So um, if you have people locally so that at least you should start and then don't also yes yeah, small business owner how small is your business do you understand me uh -huh. so if it's you you can the way it works is this if your business is um, going to do maybe five hundred thousand dollars have you started doing fifty thousand naira do you understand me? Because I think that is a thing that will teach you in the program anyway, but if you can start it before you even get into the program. 
um, structure yourself out, talk to people. Um, you, you, this is a tech guy. You can talk to me as well. Um, we started Pay Later Hub in 2021, uh, June, June 2021, and then um, we are doing monthly revenue that runs into tens of thousands of dollars currently. So structure yourself, structure yourself. Just put yourself together and then get the confidence of your friends. Do you understand me? You have angel investors. Somebody should be able to give you one million naira. If you don't have, um, look around for accelerators program to join. You understand me? And then be ready to work, learn. You understand me? You can also speak to this too. Yeah, so uh, the reason I want to speak to this is because of the phase of my life I am right now. I've already started studying deeply because like he said, he spent six years in the bank and is now a billionaire. I was telling my very good friend, I haven't seen anybody recognized as a very wealthy person from salary. It's not done. It's not that they don't exist. They are not just recognized. Now, if we look at Facebook and Google, trust me, if I were working in Google with my level, I'll be taking 20, 000, minimum of $20,000 after 21 working days. Your salary is cal calculated by 21 working days, Monday to Friday, right? Now, there are billionaires in Google. It's not just uh, Sundar Pichai, that's the CEO. But they are not mentioned. Why? It's salary. So I've taken my time to begin to study how I can take that leap into a business and sustain it. Before you say you're looking for an investor, you need to know what it is. No investor wants to give you money and not earn out of it within a short time. They've mastered time. You haven't. You, ha you, you sleep. They don't. He just told you he doesn't sleep till three. And his wife needs to remind him that he needs to take his bath. You didn't catch that line. What was he doing? Most of you complain we are tired. So they've mastered time. They know that if they want to give you one million or two million or five million, they want to get something out of it in six, one year. So when you say you need an investor, you need to first look at where your business is, how your business is, and what you can handle. Sometimes you don't need it. In fact, I met my uncle sometime last year because I was looking for two million to put in a business. He opened my eyes so well that for me to come to his office and said, I need two million, I don't need it. I had good reasons, trust me. I didn't go and meet a beggar, and he knows I'm not a beggar. He knows if I leave James one week, God will breeze it in. But he was like, no, for you to be asking, that means it's not what you need. What you need is what's making you ask. If you can handle what's making you ask, that money is nothing, right? So while you think you need an investor, please first do your math and see, and then you'll be fine. Trust me. Thank you, please. I still keep the mic with you because I have a question. Thank you so much. This is from a HR personnel. He or she is asking what area of tech that they can align with to enable them leverage on, you know, to help them leverage on, how can they leverage tech with to HR. be able to succeed in yeah, human yeah. resources? Sorry, um, HR person, just, you should ask Google and then, just wait, 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 wait for me. Eh? Look for Zoho people, for example, is yeah. an HR suit. Go there and study what they have. Copy their flow. Nobody is going to arrest you. You understand me? See, the question how do I do this now is, um, it's not the question. <laughs> you understand me? The how is everywhere because everybody is doing it. Do you understand me? The question is how are you doing it better? So what is happening now is not um, how do I start this out? Mm -mm. Go and copy what somebody is doing. Don't do that. 
Look for the gap in the thing the person is doing and then fill that gap. That is why, where you will find the relevance in the market. Otherwise, you do it too, it becomes a me too business and everybody else will see it. It's like bankers who are chasing after you for funds. I put my money in Union Bank, I put it there. It doesn't make any difference. Who is giving me a loan? Who understands my business? I don't know if you understand me. The tech guy will answer you. They will tell you the program and the other stuff. You understand me? But I feel that there are a lot of HR suits everywhere. Just go online, ask uh, chat GPT, and they will bring it up. Go and open an account with them as though you want to use it. Do you understand me? Then begin to interrogate and their modules step by step, and then you will understand, okay, this is why they have this here, this is why they have the other one here, and then look at what they already have, and then improve on it. Thank you very much, sir. Right, so he just gave you the basics of how you do it. But let me take, let me take you through how you would do it as an individual. He, that was for a business person if you want to go into the HR business. That's how you should think. But now, let me look at you as I look at myself. I'm a single business entity. If you can grind that into your mind today, grind it. If you are employed, you are a business. Somebody is paying you for service. So how would you get valuable using tech? There are softwares these days that make HR seamless, in fact. Seamless HR. How many of you have heard about that? Who is the, who is the HR personnel that, that asks the question? You've heard about Seamless HR? I worked. <laughs> yeah. I, have you heard about Bamboo? Good. Now, because of how thick is, you know there is G Suit from Google. Yeah. There, you know there is um, Microsoft. They have a suit. Teams, good. You know um, Atlisan, the guys that handle Jira and the rest, good. Get yourself grinded in those tools. You get, I'm not saying you should go and start a business, but I'm saying you should get yourself grinded in those tools. Because when you go into any company and they're looking for HR and they have a software, and you're like, <laughs> they give you to send the memo from your end to another end. <laughs> they say, do this thing. <laughs> it will be OK for the first three months that you ask questions, because you have to align yourself with the company policy. But after three months, you're sitting, <laughs> that we. <laughs> you understand? So like he said, one, one fundamental thing that we should all take home from today's meeting. You spend money to make money. That's why you pay school fees. You bought test books. You bought a pen. You bought a book. So that you get knowledge. So, you understand? Now, in order to make it a bit godly, sow that seed and get that thing. Once it's a seed, it will germinate. So look out for common HR softwares, sow the seed, get the knowledge, paste it on your CV, and send it out. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. So um, there's a question here about how to fund startup. I believe that that question has already been addressed. But there is a business question here, sir. Please, this is for you. Okay. A tech startup. For funding. Wow. All right. The stages for funding a tech startup. Okay. I feel like you guys are sapping me too well. <laughs> so, it's two different things, and I will explain. Looking for funding is I have a business. I want people to bring money together so that I can employ more senior engineers, have more environments. Like I know, like we all know, the network in Nigeria is bad, the electricity is bad. So if you're hosting your software with a Nigerian company, 
Oh, yo. So you need money. You want to do these things. You know your software need it at this point, but you don't have the money. Of course, dollar is not your mate, right? If not because it has been cautioned, would have been spending 2000 2005 for dollar. Please cut it out of your sin. If Nigeria government did not intervene, what dollar is being sold now is not correct. I will take up our data, I will take up our economy, I will take up our usage, and I will draw to you and show you that as of today, the proposed price of dollar it should be would be 2,600 and something. And the proposed price of fuel, if it was left for everybody to import, would not also be your mate. Because who wants to lose when I buy barrels for almost a huge, <laughs> trust me. Oil and gas is oil and gas because money where they go there, senior people, right? So let's leave that now to the question. And now, like he said, there are people who have money they want to put in places. Those are the people that fund startups. And they don't just put it. He will tell you. And I have a few, one or twos, but I will not just give you because you ask. In fact, my financial uncle has taught me that very well. He won't just pick money and give you. You have to show him that that business you're doing is well recorded. That business you're doing, you have to see the plans of that business. You have to see that the skills in that business. Would that know how you do it? I'll be sure you just give me 10 million now to go and build the software and come. Give me a... <laughs> so for you to invest in a business, please check the business account. Check the transparency. This person that is doing this business, can he just wake up in the morning and take a million out of the business, even when the business is not making a million? That's the person's integrity. Check the expenditure of that business. Is the business buying what they shouldn't need? Imagine a startup. I mean, the software, so let me use the software. Because of our remote nature, I'm starting a startup. There is no pressing need for me to go and rent an office. Because it's a software, I just need my engineers to be everywhere, and they are working for me. In fact, Google now has it that programmers' knowledge. Google software runs 24 hours, and there are engineers that are awake all around the clock. How they achieve that is there are engineers they've employed all around the globe. He just took a course from Silicon Valley, US, that is six hours away from us. Those guys are awake, Nigeria is sleeping. So Nigeria's engineer will be sleeping, the US engineers will be monitoring it. That's why you see Google very fast. Everybody is using it, but nobody complains it's slow. You get, but all now you're a GT bank app, you won't enter, you cannot retrieve your details. <laughs> Please cut that out. <laughs> I don't want to be sued. So now, if you want to invest in business, if you want to be an investor, please do your background check. Any reasonable billionaire would. So your business that you want to flip that money into, just do your background check so that you don't waste it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Please let's put our hands together. Thank you, sir. Sir, please, this next one is for you. And I'm taking it because I think that a couple of persons may also be in this situation and would want to know what to do. As I said, as a small business owner, is it right for me to venture into three to four businesses? Doing so many because if one fails, the other might not fail. <laughs> if your eye be singled, your body will be full of light. I think that's just it. Um, building a company begins with one customer problem one customer problem. I'll give you an example. Um, my consumer credit company, some people have asked me, why not just make it a digital microfinance bank? 
I want to organically try myself over a period of time. So I'm lending. That is just a part of a bank, isn't it? I want to perfect it. Do you understand me? Um, if you start many things at the same time, all of them will fail. I will tell you, this one customer problem I'm trying to solve or that people pick up to solve um, is what is making some of us stay up till 3 a.m. So where will you have the time to stay for another? Will you have 3 a.m. as in? Will you have, do you have, you understand me? It's, see, you know, when people raise money or they tell you this is how much this company is making and all of that, and then you see it maybe in Google News or from some other, on, on some other platform, you think, oh, wow, these people are, or got work did there. Do you understand me? And you should be ready to give it the work. Give it the work that it, it deserves. Do you understand? So I, who asked that question, a boy or a girl? <laughs> <laughs> eh? Those are the kind of, don't go and be dating a number of girls in case one fails, or, oh, you understand me? <laughs> It's just like that. The Bible says that when your eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. So you should be, one, be sure of the problem you are trying to solve. It, it should make sense. It should be realistic. If there's obviously a gap there, then there's money there. Sit with it. Do you understand? So many problems at the same time. Mm, it won't work. Thank you very much. Okay, please. But there's no more to this. There's no more to this. It has never shown anywhere, statistically, that, or even in the Bible, that you divided your attention and you got it. So why do that? It's best you, retra you retreat, retire, take a deep study, identify, and then focus. Even with the one customer problem you're solving, for example, you can't, you can't even develop all your products at the same time. Do you understand me? Um, you were talking about something that just, on WhatsApp, right? Yeah, WhatsApp un understood that there was a need for what, video what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Video message. Why didn't they start it at the same time? Why did they not just put everything together? Do you understand me? So even from your one customer problem, don't even push yourself to launch your product at the same time. We started um, payroll lending. We are perfecting it. We want to move to another product. We are developing that. When we launch it, I will tell you the name. And then we, yeah, it was part of the meeting what I was explaining to my mentor this afternoon, she, um, somewhere in um, Qatar. Now, so, so Mark, what is the next thing? I said, okay, um, we've gotten our product, de um, product uh, development um, re uh, requ yeah, requirement. The link has been drawn for this. So between this and the other one, which we confess, I said, this is coming first. We want to try a particular market, exposing ourselves, um, Maybe we'll put like 20, 10 million there and see if the money will come back. If it doesn't, then we'll refine it. And so with the one problem, don't even push out all your products at the same time. I started that. Um, we're doing BMPL, doing this, doing the other one. But quietly, I have decided to um, reduce our exposure in the other place. It, it wouldn't work. So do one perfect it, take it to a particular level, then move to the other one. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. But please, sir, this question is for you, and it will be the last question for tonight. The person wants to know, so he has a job that pays well, in, but it's not his area of, it's not his field, and then he got another job that doesn't pay so well, but it's his field, and now he's in a fix. And you know, you, you talked about most of that when you talked about if you are in a job as an employee or it's supposed to be like your lifelong, your lifelong job. So what is your advice to this person? What should he do? 
Should he stay in the field where he's getting so much money, but it is not what he wants to practice? Or should he just venture into the wild and take the job where the salary is not that juicy, but the pay is not? Thank you. Okay, so um, I think you will be able to tell yourself, um, if I ask you, what is success to you? If success is making more money because of what you are using the money to take care of, stay with the one that gives you money. But if success is not that, then move to the one that you think is your life's job. But I just hope that you have not wasted the money that you have made in the current place that is paying you well. Because what it is is this. I will give you an example. Um, when I was in the, in the bank, yeah, I was in the bank and then when I started real estate business, but one of the first thing I did in the bank was car wash. I had car wash. People were taking, <laughs> taking loan, and then I wasn't really, okay, so I took some loan. Instead of buying a very big car, I bought a very small car that could carry me around. And then the remaining money, I took the same sum that everybody took. The remaining money, I opened car wash in four places. Estimated what I was making for that car wash. You understand me? That sum together was more than what I was paying back to the bank, given the money I took that bought me the car, that helped me to set up the car wash. I got one cab guy, Yusuf, who was running the car wash for me with some of those house guys. So he, because it was always on transit, he could stop somewhere. I think it was two five. I don't know how much they were paying me per day. Yusuf, your own is 500. Bring my 2,000 for me. You understand me? So have something on ground from where you are making money now. If you have not done that, please tarry there until you have done it. <laughs> you understand me? Because uh, this one that is your passion go fade do, when money not do your hand. You understand me? Yeah, it's my, no matter how much of your dream job it is, if it is not paying you, <laughs> do you understand me? Uh -huh. So you, if you have not done if you have not taken this step or if you have not saved enough, you understand me, to allocate that funds into another business that will give you some flows, you understand me, um, while you move to what you want to do, then stay in this current job, make some good money, invest it somewhere so that whatever you, your pay is in this new place that you think is what you want to do for life, then you'll be able to sustain yourself financially. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's jam our hands together. Thank you so much. Oh, OK. Thank you, sir. So uh, to just put a cap to what he said, a lot of us are in that situation one way or the other. Why I know that is because we would jump for a juicier pay over what we are earning. and. It's a fact in Nigeria that if your salary shifts, your lifestyle follows it. So if you want to go with the lower job, have you sat to look at the responsibilities of reducing your income? There is a responsibility. You, would not, you didn't feel it when it went up, but you will feel it when it comes down, right? So. In that, this is what I would really like to advise you. Don't put passion in front of making money. It has never worked. <laughs> it, honestly, if you, <laughs> except that, except if your passion is money making. But uh, you want to put your passion in front of it except God hold you by his hand. Don't do it overnight. So like he said, if it is now that, for example, you heard the call of God and you want to shift, it's a drastical shift because God sin. No, they get pay you. <laughs> now God, they pay you. So you can do what he did. You see what he, do, he did. He took a loan that is within his limit. He then exposed that money to bring more money, and then he can switch. 
You get? So when he told you he switched, he didn't wake up and say, I know they do again. He put things in place and then say, bank, it might be no at this junction. You, you, you see, you see. As at the time I left, what I did was, okay, I'm going to do this now. I'm going to do this now. Then I approached the lock. Once I approached the lock, and I told myself, well, John, you have to take this now. And at that point, you have to be deliberate and calculate well. Do you understand? I've saved enough, and I told myself, look. I really want to jump into business. This is what I want to do. I know that. But if this thing no work, they, they buy a job for Nigeria now. I go buy a job. <laughs> you understand me? I go buy a job. If this one fail, I go buy a job. Look for a government office where the pay is reasonable and then force my way into that place. You understand me? If it's possible, see how I get posted into where I am not going to be overly engaged. And then from there, I can still do business. Do you understand? So yeah, I know you, you have passion, but you need money. <laughs> <laughs> Let's jam our hands together for Jesus. Amen. You know, Pastor promised us that he was not going to bring trained talkers. He brought people who, you know, have had the raw experience and i believe that we were all blessed tonight as we round up for tonight and before i invite pd please we are to reconvene here tomorrow by 9 a.m sharp and you know why excellent people we start by 9 a.m if you have been blessed tonight it would be an error to come alone please make a commitment to come with somebody and god will bless you in the name of jesus jam your hands together as i invite pd hallelujah i believe we have been inspired investor is smiling <laughs> investor do you want to say something hallelujah thank you so much uh Mr. Adakole, thank you so much, Mr. Mike Michael. God bless you. God bless you. We are grateful. Our hands together for them one more time. Our hands together for them one more time. Uh, just as uh, Mrs. Oji said, in this place, we stick to time. Today, we say 5 p.m. By 5 p.m., we started. It's our rule. We are excellent people. African time, as I said before, is animal's time. That's what the white were saying. There's nothing called African time. So tomorrow is 9 a.m., and that's what it is. And tomorrow we'll be having two former special advisors to the president. Two former special advisors to this president address us tomorrow morning. And I believe, God, that at the end of this conference, your life will be better. A lot of us, your testimony of the next stage of your life and destiny will make reference to this program. In the name of Jesus. As I said, uh, you know, when you hear stories like this, testimonies duplicate themselves. Principles, success leave traces. And your responsibility is to pick them up. So I think we have had enough. Can we jump to our feet as we get ready to go? We used to sing a song. Do we mind singing it? First timers. Okay, this is a meeting. Okay, let's be seated one minute. Sorry, let's be seated one, min one more minute. Okay, if today is not your first time in Grace Breed, today is not your first time, can you be on your feet? Today is not your first time, can you be on your feet? Anyone seated beside you is our special guest. Can you shake hand with them? Shake hand with them, shake hand with them. We won't take a song, we'll take family song at the end of the day. Shake hand with everyone seated with you. TRM, I'm sure you know what to do. Shake hand with those who are seated. I appreciate them. We are not singing first time our song, but we'll take family song. Okay. So tomorrow we'll be back here by 9 a.m. And on Sunday also is 9 a.m. Family song. Let's take the family song. Be on our feet now as we play the family song.
take our benediction. I am a new creation. That does not list, sound like people who have listened to what we just listened to. I am a new creation. In Christ Jesus, I am beloved by God. I am favored by God. I am a grace breed. It's not my fault. I did not earn it. It is a gift of grace. I am supernaturally empowered by the Holy Spirit to be a witness for Christ in the earth. I am healthy. I am healthy. I am healthy. I am wealthy. I have money. I take money out of money. I walk in integrity and honor. I have the God kind of life. I have received abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Therefore, I reign in life. I reign in influence and affluence. I am so blessed. Even the blessed. Call me blessed. Now you walk up to five persons and tell them the longer you live, the brighter you shine. Walk up to five persons and tell them the longer you live.